Shalom. This is your brother Abarawan giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. Yahweh be in the name of the Heavenly Father, <coughs> the Creator of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God which these creatures speak of, and Yahweh Shai is only begotten so which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the Raka Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who rule well, pushing 100% into the gospel, truth of the gospel, helping to wake up and to seal the elect of the nation of Israel. And so it's not to you sincere acumen that are pushing this gospel in truth and sincerity, risking your lives and your freedom to do so. And so we are going to go into today's, as you can see clearly here on the screen, rape. Because it has turned into a trending topic in Nigeria for some reason, you know. Because out of nowhere, the rape, the numbers of people that are getting sexually, the numbers of women that are getting sexually assaulted just jumped up. And when I say out of nowhere, I'm, I'm speaking that, I, I speak of it sarcastically. The numbers didn't go up, you know, the numbers are pretty much the same, it's just that, you know, the news cycles have, you know, gone full circle and come back to the whole rape matter, you know, because, you know, we know how the news works, the once the topic stops being relevant, so, you know, once they need a, a distraction, they, they bring up one of the old topics that, you know, they, 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 they've been talking about before, and right now, that topic is uh, concerning rape. And you know, the others and the apostles of Great Boston they already, they already touched on this matter, you know, they already said what needs to be said about this matter, they've already given it the whole, they've already <coughs> broken it down scripturally, which is the only, and the, which is the true and the right way to break it down, you know, scripturally. So I'm just going to do it again because, you know, that matter, when, when they broke it down, you know, I was already, I was in the tree during that time and it was a huge deal, you know, the, the other Israelite count, specifically IUIC and IUICPK. They start calling the elders and the elders, elders and the apostles. They start calling them rapists and pedophiles because of they read the rape laws, or at least the laws that can most the laws that most the laws in the scriptures that relates to rape the most. They just read it from the scriptures. That's all they did. You know, they read the Bible and they start being called rapists and pedophiles. Imagine, imagine that. Then it just shows you. They, they just shows you that most of these Israelite like, counselors you know, they don't believe what they teach. You know, they don't They don't actually believe in, in the scriptures that they are reading. Because when the elders and the apostles read, read those reports, I was like, okay, yeah, that that that, that makes sense. But you know, these realize they came they came against it, even though they won't do any video responding to how it's wrong, or they won't show how they won't bring out any precepts to show that the other than apostles breakdown was wrong, because they know that deep down that they are right. Because that the breakdown, it's plain as day, man. Even a two third J could, could get it. It's that simple. <coughs> But you know that's beside the points. What I was going to focus on right now is that you know, prisoner rape thing has become a huge deal in Nigeria. So much so that you know people are rioting about it. You know, you know even the George Floyd protest, protest you know the race war protests that are going on in America. You know people are storming the U.S. embassy here in, here in, here in Nigeria, and they're rioting about it. But they're also rioting about this um, this rape thing. So you know I'm just going to go through the precepts you know for any. Of your brothers or any sisters, sisters out there, you Akiyama, you Agwata, have that don't know what the scripture says concerning rape. I'm just going to go through the precepts, you know, to show what um, the, scripture, the scripture says concerning rape. So, first of all, we have the definition of rape here, you know, the etymology rather, because you know, here at Great Millstone, we like to we like to actually know what our words mean before we you know before we say them, and the rape basically means to grab. So this is the, the so this is the etymology of rape, and it reads. Late fourteenth century, seize, prey, abduct, take by force, and form is rape, and from the Anglo-French rapper, which means to seize and to abduct, basically to grab. You know, so that's the real meaning of rape because in now in our actuality, the scriptures does not have any laws concerning rape because there is no such thing as rape in the scripture. Rape is a man-made concept by Esau, you know. You know, that, that word, the, you know, the term rape you know, as, as concerning sexual assault, you know, I, I won't say that there is no such thing as sexual assault, but that whole rape thing, you know, it's a, it's a, I won't say it's a made up word, but the word is used out of context because what the word basically means is to grab somebody, you know, to seize, to take hold of by force, which can also be applied, which can also be, which can also be used in a, in a sexual manner, but you know, the word doesn't, doesn't, isn't just exclusive to you know, sexually assaulting somebody, even even just fight, you know, even just them um, assaulting somebody physically, 
I can also be considered rape. But you know that's beside the point. You know, let's just get some of the precepts concerning rape. Any, let's just get some. Of the, let's just get some of the precepts concerning rape and just close out. You know, it's going to be a quick video, not really that long. All right. So this is the case that start, started the whole um, rape talk in in here in here in um, Nigeria. You know, the um, a university student was raped and killed by four men. So this is the article right here, and it reads: Outrage as four men rape and kill Uniben undergraduates <coughs> in church. And it reads: The rape and murder of Mrs. Vera Omozuwa, a 22-year-old honor-level microbiology student of the University of Benin, which is Uniben, in a church has fueled national outrage. Omozuwa died yesterday after doctors battled for three days to save her after she was gang raped by four unknown men and beaten to a pulp with, fire ex with a fire extinguisher. And this case which was reported at the Oregbeni police station ben ben Benny, has elicited outrage with justice for Owa trending all, all, on all social media platforms tried yesterday. So, okay. And the undergraduate was said to have gone to her church, the redeeming Christian Church of God. Ah. A demonic hell who anyway edo province 10 ikuba hill benin to read when the cultist raped and killed her and she was found hour later by the church by the church's security guard who had earlier visited the key keeper to get the church's keys but was told amazua was with it so that is basically the case right there and you know according to the scriptures these four men are supposed to be they're supposed to be they're supposed to be busy they're supposed to be mur murdered because you know, not only did they, they, not only did they rape a woman and she was, she was, she was obviously a Jake, you know, obviously an Israelite, but they also killed her as well. This woman has supposed to get the death sentence. But what this did, what this case did was, you know, it brought out all the, all the other cases or all the other rape cases that weren't addressed all over Nigeria. You know, people started, yeah, people started doing the, you know, they started doing the Nigerian version of MeToo movement, you know, women that, that, that were raped like two years or three years ago. You know, years ago, a lot of coming out are claiming that, you know, so the the lot of coming out are coming out saying that so and so person, you know, sexually assaulted them, all this kind, all this kind of things, you know, all this kind of madness. So before I'm going to go into the rape precept, I want to go into the rape scripture. I want to get the precept first. Let's see. Let me um remember what the rape precept I was trying to get. I think that is from the book of Isaiah. I can't remember how it goes. Um, let me think. Ah, yeah, seek out of the book of Yahweh. Let me just type meets. Alright, so here it is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, and it reads Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mates. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And the reason why I'm reading this precept is because you know that a bunch of two thirds and all these other people are in the world, they're going to get hot because uh, they could get hot and offended by this word. Because of the things that, because of the, you know, because of the, because of the way, way in which the scriptures handle, you know, uh, because of the way the scriptures handle sexual assault, they're going to get as they're going to get offended by it. And the way the scriptures handle rape, the laws concerning rape, they're going to get offended by it. But guess what? You know, these scriptures has the final say. You know, you know, this is the end of right here. The words, these, these are the words of the Most High, the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and whatever he says goes. No arguments and no, no bitching and screaming about it, alright? So let's get that in Romans chapter 3, verse 3, and then we'll go into the rape laws. So this is the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 3, and it reads For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of power without effect? So what if they don't believe in the sort of the they say that oh these laws are too harsh, you know, and this isn't that this isn't right, and that this is not supposed to be you know how the thing is good. That's that is unbelief right there. And this is what they read, and this is what I continue from verse 4. God forbid, yet ye, lest power be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. In other words, you know, anybody that does not agree with these scriptures, anybody that does not agree with this with, 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 with what I about to read out of this out of these precepts, they are basically a liar because they are not adhering to the truth that is in Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Alright, so let's get it. The book of Deuteron Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. So we'll start with from here. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22, and it reads, If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. 
both the man that lay with the woman and the woman so shall, and, the, and the woman so shall thou put away evil from Israel. This is basically the laws concerning this is, this is basically the law of adultery. And this is what adultery boils down to a man going and a man going and lying and sleeping with a woman that has a husband and that is it. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not a married man sleeping with him. It's not a married man sleeping, 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 sleeping with a woman. Whether, whether, whether the man is married or unmarried, if he goes and sleeps with another man's wife, it's adultery. And if a married or unmarried man goes and sleeps with an unmarried woman, guess what? That's not adultery. It's just called, it's just called having sex. All right, let's continue going down from in, in chapter two, and we'll continue from verse in verse twenty three. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to be betrothed to her, unto her husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Another case of adultery. And this is why that those cases of women coming out after years, years after, after allegedly being raped is invalid, especially if those women are not married, you know. If they are married, because if they are married, it's just it's not a case of rape; it's a case of adultery, you know. And if they're not, if they're, and if they're not married, guess what? They had sex with their husband, and that's and that, that is that, you know, because you, because I want to read and read and you see why I said what I said. And I continue from verse twenty-five. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbour and slayeth him, even so is this the ma- even so is this matter. So in other words, you know, if the woman is carried into a into a place where she cannot scream, you know, where she cannot, you know, where she cannot um, what is what I'm looking for, you know, where she where she can't shout, where nobody can hear her scream. Well, then, and this is this only applies for married women. You know? This only applies for married women. You know the case. One unmarried woman or a woman that's not or, like, or a woman that's not engaged, it's a different matter entirely. But all this only applies for married women. You know, if if they had if they carried her to a place where nobody can hear her scream and they raped her there, and she goes and you know and, you know, and she goes and reports the case to the elders, to the, you know, to the elders of the city, and they and then when they when she reports the case, you know, you know when they hear, they hear the details of the case and they find out that she don't, she could there was no way that anybody could have helped her in that situation. You know they. That that, that, that that is the only situation where that is the only case where it is rape. So first of all, one, she has to be married. Two, when she was assaulted by the man, it has to be in a place where nobody could hear her scream, nobody to come to her aid. And three, immediately after it happens, not two days after, not two weeks after, you know, not a whole month or a year after, immediately after it happens, she has to report the case because if she delays, if she tarries, guess what? That is that that that, 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 that is, is, is changing it from rape to adultery. So, you know, if you want to use the, the legal term, it's statute of limitations. So, statute of limitation would be if I wanted to be, you know, if I, if I, if I wanted to, if I wanted to be kind and just and just give a little bit of leeway for the situation, it would be maybe forty eight hours, you know. And if you, she was in a position where she was running out on contrast, I guess. It's, it it doesn't apply. I guess it doesn't apply. You know, it applies for eight hours during the time where she is um conscious or she is you know she has you know she's you know, she's conscious. Anyway, I continue from verse twenty from verse twenty seven. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. All right, so let's so this, this is verse from verse twenty eight. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is betrothed, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, that and they be found. In other words, if the woman is not engaged or is not married, so this is a woman that is completely unmarried, you know, which is the case of most rape victims. So let's hear what the scripture says concerning that. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel, unto the damsel's father, fifty shekels of silver. And she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. And that's basically the laws concerning rape. So long as the woman is unmarried, you no, know, as scripture says in the book of um, Exodus chapter 22, if a man entice a maid and lie with her, he has to make her his wife. And that's basically it. You know. So 
this whole thing, thing concerning consent, I think we keep talking about, talking about, you know, consent, consent, consent. There is no such thing as consent according to the scriptures. So that means that there's no such thing as consent at all. You know, that's just a made up, that's that, 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 that just a fable that is made up to, you know, to give women, to make women believe that they have power, but in reality, there's no such thing as consent, you know. And in the case of the, um, the woman has started the case of the woman's death has started this whole thing. You know, those four men, you know, they, they, they deserve they, they, they deserve the death sentence because guess because what they didn't do was what they didn't just you know, they, 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 they deserve the death sentence. But not, not only did they just take another man's proper property and do it as they please, but they also killed but they also you know, raped, raped the woman until she until she died. So, so those four men deserve to be put to death. Alright, so this is all you know, I have to say concerning the whole rape matter, you know, because it has been going on for a while here in here in Nigeria, and I didn't really put much thought into it until you know it started becoming here, you know, to like for, uh, to like what it's been three days now, and it's and it's, and, and the news is still talking about it. You know, there are still protests about it, and people are still, even there are even the leg 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 legislators in these countries are com countries coming together to re to. What's what I'm looking for? They're coming together to re-evaluate the rape bills. So we also have to speak on it, you know. As one of the few men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that is here in West Africa, I have to speak on it, you know, and you know, filter the matter through, through the scriptures, which is which is supposed to be how it is done. And these are what the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh says, you know, with that, I hope through the three spirits, every brothers are edified, all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rekha Kodash. Shalom.